All right, so now that we've had a chance to talk a little bit about being able to make a copy of an object, say we have one reference variable and we want to have another reference variable that has a copy, there's a completely different uh, instance of the object with the same contents inside of it. Uh, now that we have that knowledge, we can use that to start working on what is known as aggregation. We'll see a little bit later that this idea of being able to copy objects is very important for making sure that when we actually perform aggregation that we are doing so in a way that is actually secure in our programs. Uh, but before we get into all of that, we first want to make sure that we actually understand what aggregation is and kind of the first couple of steps we need to go through to actually start performing this process. So uh, to talk a little bit about aggregation, an aggregate is going to be a whole formed by combining several components together. What that means in programming is that aggregate classes, you can think of these kind of like the whole, uh, these are going to be formed by combining other classes. Uh, those are going to be the individual or the several components that we're combining together. Essentially, aggregation is whenever an instance of a class is a field in another class. So one of the pieces of data in one of your classes is going to be an object of another class. Another way that we can describe aggregation is going to be with this has a relationship or a whole part relationship. For example, imagine that you have two classes in your program. One of those classes is a company class and the other is a president class. And so what you want to say is that one of these company classes or an object of that company class inside of it you will find an object of the president class. So you would say that a company has a president. That's the general relationship between them. So to get started on actually putting this together, we'll first begin by creating the president class. So we're first going to go ahead and put together the code for the class that will eventually be found inside of another class. So we're going to start with the president. We'll make that first. Then we'll make the company class and we'll go ahead and put a president object into that company class. So if we start with the president class, every object of the president class should have a single string field for the name. So we can see our little piece of code that we have right here. We've got our public class president, so making that class for the president. We then have a single string for it. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that that's private, still adhering to proper data hiding. Uh, the data type will be string. The variable name, in this case, we're just going to call it name since it will hold the name of that president. And we'll say that this is uh, initially going to be equal to an empty string. So we're just going to initialize it to something. Uh, then we'll go ahead and put together the constructor and all of the remaining methods for this. So in this particular case, I've uh, to save space, I've kind of just included a comment specifying the different methods that we're going to put into this. So we'll start off with a constructor, which takes a string. We use that to uh, initialize the name to some value. We then also have things like get name, set name, and to string. So with get name, we can go ahead and return that string for the name with set name. It's just another way to update the name later if we need to. And then the to string method, we learned about that uh, a few videos ago where we can go ahead and just specify what should be displayed or what the output should be whenever we go and grab one of these objects of the president class. So let's go ahead and minimize this. Let's go put that together. So we'll come over to NetBeans. We'll go ahead and create a new project to do this. So for this one, we'll do it as a Java application. We'll click Next. Uh, for this one, since the company is going to be kind of the primary class for this application, eventually we're going to put this president inside of the company class. I'm going to go ahead and make the project based on that. So I'm going to call this company. So we'll click Finish. And then right here, it's going to start off by just giving me the code for that company file, so the company class, which we'll come back to later. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and leave this as it is for now. We'll clean it up and start adding stuff to it a little bit later. To start off with, we're going to go ahead and create a new Java class inside of our company package. So I'm going to go ahead and select that right here. So for this one, this is going to be for our president. So I'm going to specify the class name to be president. Click Finish. And so now we've got the sort of starter code for that. Go ahead and get rid of these extra comments that I don't need. So at the very top, the only thing I'm going to keep is this package statement specifying that this is from the company package. And then right here, we've got our class header. So the first thing I'm going to put into the body of this class is going to be that field for the name. So we're going to do private string name. I'll say this is initially equal to just an empty string. 
The next thing I'm going to need is going to be the constructor for it. So in this particular case, I'm going to keep it fairly simple for now. I'm just use one constructor. So we're going to say public president. And then the one parameter for my constructor is going to be the name that I want to pass in to go ahead and assign to this name field right here. And keep in mind in this case, I'm using the same variable name for both the field and the parameter. So in order to make sure that I don't have any variable shadowing going on, I'm going to be using the this keyword. So we're going to say this dot name. So that'll specify the field. And then we're going to say this is equal to just name. And that one's going to specify the parameter right there. Okay. Uh, the next thing I'm going to need are going to be get name, set name, and to string. So get name and set name, those are pretty straightforward, just standard getters and setters. So let's say for get name, so we're going to do public string because we want to return that string with the name. I'll uh, say get name. Uh, so our getter doesn't have any arguments, so we'll leave those uh, parentheses empty. And then we'll just say return this.name. So very clearly explaining exactly what this is going to be returning, which is the name field. We'll then go ahead and make our setter. So we'll say public void set name. So keep the return type for this one void because we don't need to return anything. We're just updating the contents of that name field. Uh, the thing I'll pass in will just be a string with the new name that we want to update it to. So it's going to look pretty much just like our constructor. The only difference is when we intend to call this. So this is primarily going to be called after we've already constructed our president object. So then right here, we're going to have the same code as we had for our constructor. We'll just say this.name equals name. And then finally, we need the toString method. So we're going to say public string toString. Uh, remember that the toString method does not take any arguments, so we'll leave that empty. And then right here, what I need to go ahead and do is just return a string, uh, ideally that describes the current state of my president. So in this case, the state is just gonna be based on whatever the name happens to be. So basically, I'll just return a string that just says that uh, the name of the president is, and then whatever name you gave it. So right here, we'll go ahead and say something like return, the name of the president is, plus, and then say uh, this dot name. So again, and make sure that we're very clear about precisely what things we are working with. So in this case, I'm going to be very clear about the fact that I'm working with the name field. I'm going to save that. And so at this point, I've got pretty much all the code that I need for my president. So if I wanted to, I could go ahead and just make some kind of a demo file, so an additional class that's going to hold the main method for this program. And then inside of that, I could go ahead and start using this president object. You could just do a few things like getting the name, setting the name, just reading off that to string. Uh, so we can go ahead and put something together just to take a look at this. So we're going to create a new Java class. Uh, so eventually, this is going to be used as the demo file for the company itself. So I'll go ahead and just name it based on that. So I'll just go ahead and call it the company demo, and then click finish. Again, we'll go ahead and get rid of the extra comments that we don't need. So again, the only thing that I have at the very top is gonna to be my package statement, indicating again, this is in the company package. Right here, we've got our class header. So this is the company demo. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna need, since this is going to hold the main method, I'll need that main method header. So we're gonna say public static void, call it main. And then we have that string array for the arguments. And then right here in the body of this main method, I can go ahead and start adding some code to uh, construct an object of the president class and then maybe do something, maybe call a couple of methods on it. So let's say we create a president. We'll call this one, let's say we call it just pres. This be equal to a new president object. And then we need to pass in a, uh, a string right here. So since we're dealing with the president of companies, and off the top of my head, the easiest one I can think of, it's not even true anymore. Uh, we'll go ahead and just use Bill Gates as a very simple example of this. So once I've created this object, if I wanted to, I could just immediately print this to the console. So we can just say system.out.println. I'm going to just do pres, go ahead and save that. So if I go ahead and run this program right now, then we'll see we don't really have any issues with it. 
although it did not seem to run the correct file. So let's go ahead and make sure that we run this file. There we go. So we can see the name of the president is Bill Gates. Uh, primary issue with that is that I saw the main method over here. Since I didn't tamper with any of this. So just to make sure that I don't have that problem again, we'll go ahead and get rid of that right now. Uh, in a moment, we're gonna add more to this. I just wanted to remove the main method so that it runs the correct file. So if I try to run this one more time, I think that it will ask me, yes. So I wanna go ahead and make sure that we're using the main method inside of company demo. So this little dialogue is just double checking to make sure that this is where I intend to run the program from. I'm just gonna go ahead and click okay. And so now we can go ahead and make sure that we're getting the uh, correct output for this. Okay. Uh, so now that we've seen that a little bit, we've got our construction of our president object. We've got a print statement to go ahead and print it to the console. Uh, let's go ahead and maybe try changing that name. So let's say pres.setName. Uh, let's say we go ahead and change this. Uh, let's say we just change it to another uh, pretty well-known president or at least CEO. Uh, so we'll just use a really simple example and just, uh, just do Steve Jobs. So then if we go ahead and print this again, because we did the set name, then we can go ahead and see that our output just changes. Okay. So right now we can just see that, you know, if we wanted to use the president object by itself, we could go ahead and do that. It does still operate as its own standalone object. We can go ahead and construct it. We can set the name so we can call one of the methods on it. We can put it in a print statement and print out its contents or whatever its current state happens to be. Um, but in general, the reasoning behind aggregation is that we don't really intend to do anything quite like this. What we really want to do is put this object into our uh, company class or into an object of that company class. So we'll go ahead and come over to company now. And right here, we're going to go ahead and start adding some code. So to start off with, I'll go ahead and get this cleaned up and remove the extra comments again. Because once again, the only line that I need at the very top is going to be this package statement. Just underneath that, we'll have the header for our class. And then right here inside the body is where we're gonna start adding our code. So we'll leave it about like that. And let's go ahead and come back over here to take a look at what that's expecting. So the next thing we're gonna start putting together is the code for the company class. A company object will have two fields. It will have a string field for the company's name. So keep in mind that that's different from the president's name. The company is a totally separate thing. Uh, and it will also have a president field for whoever the current president of the company happens to be. So we can see again some more code for this. We've got our uh, public class company. We've got two fields for this. So there's two private pieces of data. Uh, we've got one for the name. So that pretty much looks exactly like what we did for our president object. We've got private string name equal to an empty string. Uh, we then also have our uh, president field. So we've got private president. Again, I'm just going to call it pres. So that'll be the, the variable name for it. And this will be initially equal to null. So I'm going to start off by having it reference essentially nothing. Uh, but then later when we actually construct it, we'll make sure that it actually references something that the user uh, provides to it. So we can see that in the constructor right here. Uh, in this case, it should say public company for the constructor. Uh, that's going to be two values. It's going to be the string for the name and then a president object called pres. Inside of the body of this constructor, we're gonna have this.name equals name, so still pretty standard. Uh, we're also gonna do pretty much the same thing for our, uh, for our pres object, or our pres field in this case, uh, where we're saying this.pres equals pres. I do have a comment right next to it saying that we will eventually need to improve the security of this line. So while we're gonna start off writing it this way, we'll eventually come back to this and make some improvements to that. And then in addition to this, we're gonna have our getters, setters, and the two string method. So the getters and setters in this case, it's gonna be uh, a getter and setter for name, and then another getter and setter for pres. So let's go ahead and minimize this. We'll go get this put together. Uh, so we'll start off by creating the fields. So we've got private string name. It's gonna be equal to an empty string just underneath this, we're going to have our president field. So we're going to say private president. 
res is going to be equal to initially a null object. So it's got a null reference, meaning that it essentially references nothing. The next thing we're going to need is the constructor. So unlike what I have in the slides, it's a slight correction that I need to make. Uh, this is going to be public company since we are in the company class. And then the two arguments are going to be string name and then president pres. And then right here in the body of this constructor, again, because I'm using the same names for both of these parameters and both of these fields, I want to make sure that we're using the this keyword to avoid variable shadowing. So we're going to say this dot name is equal to name. And then we're going to say this dot pres is equal to pres. Okay, I'm minimize this to give us some more room right here. So in addition to the constructor, we're also going to put together our getters and setters. So let's do, say, a getter and setter for the name first. So we're going to say public string get name. And for this one, we're going to go ahead and return this dot name. So this will be just like the get name method that we made for our president class. The difference here is that we're getting the name that corresponds to the company. We'll then go ahead and do public void set name. We'll pass in a name that we want to set or update our name to. We'll then go ahead and say this dot name is equal to name. Uh, we'll go ahead and do the same thing with our president field. So we're going to say public uh, president get. Uh, let's say just get pres to keep that short. Uh, keep in mind that in this case we're returning an object of the president class. So the return type for this must match that. So we must make sure that this is going to return president or that the return type is president. And then right here, we'll go ahead and say return this.pres. And then the last one of these getters and setters, we'll go ahead and do a setter for pres. We're going to say public void set pres. And then we're going to have our president pres. And right here, this is basically just the second half of our constructor, at least for now. Uh, eventually, we'll come back to that. So for this one, we're just going to do the same thing. Let's say this.pres equals pres. And then after our getters and setters, the very last thing we want to go ahead and put together is going to be our uh, toString method. So we're going to say public string toString. And right here, what we want to go ahead and do is just return a string that holds the state of this particular object, in this case, an object of the company class. So what we can go ahead and do is say return uh, the name of the company is plus, uh, right here we'll say this.name uh, plus, and then right after that, we're gonna go ahead and have another sentence. And this other sentence, what we wanna do is just say that the name of the president is, and then whatever the president's name is, but if we come back over here and take a look at this, we see that we're already doing that inside of the president. So what we could go ahead and do is append right here, this.pres, and this is going to function the same way as what we did back in our company demo, where we just put the pres object into a print statement. So if I just go ahead and put, again, just put my pres object into, in this case, just the string that will eventually be printed to the console, It'll go ahead and do the same thing for me. It'll just call the toString method for the president class. So this little piece that I have right here is eventually going to be replaced with this entire sentence here. And I think just to keep the punctuation consistent now, I'm going to go ahead and add a period to this sentence as well. OK, so coming back over here, so we've got everything that we want for this right now. So the next thing that we'll go ahead and do is go back to our company demo. We'll put together an object of the company class, give it a name, pass on a president object, and test it out from there. So right here, we'll go ahead and put in our company. Uh, let's say that for this particular one, we want to start actually referring to our company by whatever company name we're going to give it. So if we still want to continue to use Bill Gates, uh, we'll just go ahead and say Microsoft for this. 
Let's say this is equal to a new company object. And the two things I need to give it, so one of those is going to be the name of it as a string. So we're going to have our double quotes inside of there. I'll put Microsoft. And then the other thing I need to give it is going to be my object of the president class. So in this case, I've already made that right here. And this is the reference variable for it. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in right here. And then after I do that, I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of this line. Since I don't really want to interact with that president object directly anymore, I can just do that through company. And then right here, what I want to go ahead and do is just print out the state of that company object. So with this little bit of code, if we go ahead and run this, we can see that the name of the company is Microsoft and that the president of this company is Bill Gates. So if we go ahead and run this, we'll see all of that right here. The name of the company is Microsoft. The name of the president is Bill Gates. So coming back over here, to kind of summarize everything that we've put together so far, we can take a look at what is known as the, uh, the class diagram for aggregation. So we've got our two classes. You can see they're two different little UML class diagrams with their names, their fields, and their methods. Uh, one of the new things that we need to mention is gonna be the uh, way that we indicate the relationship between these classes in a UML class diagram. So this arrow with a diamond head is going to be used to indicate aggregation in UML class diagrams. It's going to point from the contain class to the container class. So in this particular case, we're saying that the president is inside of the company class. So if we think a little bit about what we've got right here, uh, we see that you know, the entire class we have on the left hand side, that president class, that's gonna be one of the fields in our company class. So you should see that in that second box, kind of right in the middle of the company class where we've got our string for the name, and then we've got this object that's gonna be of the president class. So it's got president prez. And of course, we can also see that in the code with what we just wrote. So if we take one more look at that, we've got this whole file for our president object. So this is basically just the uh, entire implementation of what we saw with that left hand class in our class diagram. And then coming over to our company, we see that we've got our object of that president class right here being used as one of the fields of this company class. So everything looks good so far. But as I mentioned before, there's a little bit of a problem that we have right now. So there are going to be certain rules to consider about the security issues that come with aggregate classes. So before I get into too much detail about what's going on right here, let's take a look at uh, what's happening with the current code that I've written and what kinds of problems that we might uh, run into. So go ahead and minimize this. Come back over here. So the first thing that I'll start off with is going to be with the constructor. So we've got this.prez equals prez. We're concerned a little bit with line 11. And then by extension, we're going to be concerned with our setter for the president. On line 31, we're trying to do the exact same thing. We're going to run into the exact same problem because of it. So let's find out precisely why this gives us a problem. So if we come over to our company demo. So we've taken this prez that we have right here. We've passed that in to go ahead and set it up right here. So that's gonna be part of our Microsoft. So right now, if I were to run this just one more time, we can see that the current state for that Microsoft object, that company, it says the name of the company is Microsoft, and then the name of the president is Bill Gates. So the reason that this line is giving us Bill Gates is because of what we have inside of this field right here. So keep in mind that we wanna make sure that this field in the company class is a distinct separate object from this particular object that we created in our main method that we just happen to use to put together or to construct that company. So let's say right here, I go ahead and use my prez and I do set name and I once again change it to say Steve Jobs. And I go ahead and save that. So the expectation, because these are intended to be completely separate objects, is that this name will change because that's exactly what I'm telling it to do. But the name that I have over here should stay the same and that's gonna to correspond to this print statement. So this print statement should not change. So if we go ahead and run this, 
we see that the name of the company is Microsoft and that the name of the president is Steve Jobs. So unfortunately, what I just said should happen did not happen. And that's because on this line right here, we did not make sure that they were completely separate. Instead, we used a shallow copy. We only copied the reference. So this thing right here references this object. So this part right here where we actually constructed that object, we passed that reference into our constructor right here. And then over on this line, uh, we just took that reference and we copied that into our field. So our field just happens to have the same name, but it's also going to reference the object as well. So they're both going to point to or reference the same object. And we've now created a shallow copy. So to correct this, I want to go ahead and change this to be a deep copy, meaning that I need to make a copy of the object itself and then assign that to my field. So right here, whenever I do this, instead of setting it up in this way, what I want to go ahead and do is just take the name that is in Prez, since that's going to be the only field that really matters when we call the constructor. Uh, and then I want to go ahead and actually construct this object of the president class. So what I mean by that is we need to use the new keyword. So we're going to use that new operator. We then want to call the president's constructor. And then the thing that I need to pass into it, because this president constructor is still expecting a string for the name of the president, uh, I need to go ahead and pass in whatever the name is for this particular object that I'm trying to use in this constructor. So in that case, what I need to do is say that I want to get the name of this particular object. So now, if I were to run this program again, because of the fact that I'm not doing a shallow copy, I'm doing a deep copy instead, I don't have to worry about uh, changing my prez in the main method. It will be a completely separate and completely um, independent object from the prez that I had in my, uh, my company object. So go ahead and run this again. And now we can see the name of the company is Microsoft and the name of the president is Bill Gates. So now we've actually fixed that problem. And then of course we need to do the same thing with our setter for the president since we have the exact same line right down here. So for this line, I'm gonna go ahead and change this as well. So we're gonna say that this is equal to a new president object. And then within the parentheses, we just wanna go ahead and give it the name. So something like that. Okay. So one other thing that we can go ahead and do, if you do not necessarily wanna to try to you know, break up all the different pieces of data inside of your objects every time you need to pass them around like this. Uh, what we could also go ahead and do is just put together a, a copy constructor. So if we come back over to president, so let's say just underneath the parameterized constructor, we'll go ahead and make our copy constructor as well. So we're gonna say public president. And in this case, now it's gonna be expecting another president object because that's just the expected behavior of a copy constructor. I'm going to say president. Uh, for this one, let's go ahead and say other pres, just to kind of uh, make it a little bit clearer. And let's say for this one, what we're going to go ahead and do is pretty much the same behavior that we just had, but now we're just going to go ahead and get it directly from this uh, other pres object that's being passed in. So we're going to say this dot name is going to be equal to other pres dot get name or in this case, just name. So we could do it this way. Alternatively, you could also just do it using, uh, using this to call the parameterized constructor. So that's another option. Uh, so there's two different ways you could approach this that work perfectly fine. Uh, so then once we do this, then what we could go ahead and do is just call the copy constructor by modifying the data type of what we're passing in. So, Instead of passing in a string, we'll just go ahead and pass in that president object. And so now what this is going to do is it's going to call the copy constructor, passing in prez. So that comes to this part right here. And from there, we're just going to go ahead and grab or take the name out of it and go ahead and assign it to the name for the uh, president object that's located inside of our company object. 
So then coming down here, we'll go ahead and do the exact same thing. We'll just remove the get name. And now we're just going to go ahead and use the copy constructor for both of these. So that covers the first of our security issues. So whenever we're assigning an object to a reference variable, that is also a field of an object, we need to make sure that we perform a deep copy. A shallow copy allows for direct access to that private field of the object, which I just demonstrated by uh, directly accessing the president field using a completely different, what was supposed to be a completely independent and kind of irrelevant uh, reference to it. I was able to modify the data inside of it, and we want to make sure that we can't do that. Additionally, we need to deal with the opposite case. So if we minimize this again, come back over here. So let's say in my company demo, let's go ahead and create another one. So right now, keep in mind that this prez that I'm using right here, we've already secured that. So setting the name for prez has no effect on our output, our expected output. We see that we're getting Bill Gates even though we changed this one to Steve Jobs. So totally separate and completely secure. But now let's say I go ahead and do something else. Let's say that I get the president from my company object. So I'm gonna be calling the get president method on this Microsoft. And I wanna go ahead and assign that to another reference variable. So I'm gonna say president, say pres2, it's gonna be equal to Microsoft.getPres. Okay. So in this case, I'm going to take the, the president object that is located in my company object, and I'm going to go ahead and assign a reference to it to pres2. And the reason that I'm doing that, if we look over at company, is right here. So I'm saying that I want to return this.pres, which is just going to return the reference to that field. So because I've done that, I've once again performed a shallow copy. This time it's kind of in reverse. I've now taken a reference that already exists in my company object and I'm now passing that over so that it's being copied into this other reference variable that is outside of my company object. So now let's say I go ahead and just use pres2 right here. Since now we're going to be concerned with some security issues that arise because of this particular object or this particular reference variable. So we'll go ahead and run this. And we'll see once again, the name of the company is Microsoft. And the name of the president is Steve Jobs. So once again, we've managed to uh, break or kind of, uh, let's say break into a company and change the name of the president in a way that was not intended. So what we need to go ahead and do in this particular case now is make sure that whenever we are returning, say this uh, reference that we have right here, oops, not that one this one. So whenever we're returning this, we want to make sure that instead we are returning a copy of it. So before we return this, we'll just go ahead and make sure that we create a new copy of it. So we can go ahead and do the exact same thing we did for our constructor and for our setter. We're going to use this little piece of code that I've highlighted right here. So let's say right here, we'll just go ahead and say return a new president object. And in this case, we're going to use this.pres uh, because at this point, whenever we're getting it, this is assuming that we're getting the field. So we want to make sure that we're getting uh, this particular version of it. Whereas when we're dealing with, uh, say, lines 11 and 31 with our uh, constructor and setter, uh, those are dealing with the parameter. So key distinction there about whether or not we're going to use the this keyword. Uh, so we'll save it like that. And now if we come back over to our company demo, if we were to run this again, now that I'm making sure that I perform a deep copy whenever I'm returning the object inside of my company object, so getting that president object. Now if I go ahead and run this, now we'll see that the name of the company is Microsoft and the name of the president is Bill Gates. So with those two little changes, we can now make sure that both of those kind of uh, security holes have been patched up. So the general rule here is that whenever you're returning a reference to uh, the object, so in this case the president, uh, such as with a getter method, you should instead return a reference to a copy of the object rather than the original object. If you return the original object, uh, again that allows for direct access to a private field. 
And then one last little thing that I want to go ahead and kind of uh, conclude on. You might have noticed that the string class does not ever do any of this. So when you're dealing with objects of the string class, these rules can be ignored. The reasoning behind this is that strings are immutable, meaning that you can't really change the contents of them. So there's no possible way to have these kinds of problems. Um, so these security issues are not really a concern when you're dealing with strings. And then one last thing to go ahead and mention is that whenever you're dealing with the uh, object fields, you want to be careful about null references for the fields of an object. So there's particular one particular instance where I have this that I'll kind of discuss in a moment. Uh, it relates to this first rule that I've got here, saying that uh, if the fields are initially null, we want to make sure that every constructor assigns a meaningful reference to these fields. A uh, check should also be done to determine if any reference variable is referencing null. And if a reference is determined to be null, it is generally good practice to assign a newly constructed object to that reference. So the little piece of code that I'm showing right here, uh, this is a very general purpose, just saying that if you're dealing with an object of some class that I call class type, uh, essentially you're just gonna say, uh, if that object uh, does not equal null, that means that it does actually reference something meaningful, we can go ahead and access the fields or methods of that object. Otherwise, we wanna go ahead and actually create or construct a new object and assign that to that reference variable. So let's say we minimize this. So if we take another look at my company class, coming up right here. So this line right here is the one that I was talking about previously, where I initially set my president object to be null but I only have one constructor in this, which is gonna be for this line right here, where I make sure that something is being assigned to it. But the thing that I'm assigning to it might not necessarily be, um, might not necessarily be an actual president object. Uh, it really kind of depends on the constructors that I'm using. In this particular case, because I'm using the copy constructor, and then the copy constructor goes out and tries to get a name from it, uh, this will go ahead and make sure that uh, nothing goes wrong when I'm putting it together. Uh, essentially, what happens is if I change this so that instead of using this pres object, uh, go ahead and just do null for this, and I save it. Uh, so what's going to happen is at one point, when we come over here, so it's just going to have it as a null reference. It'll put that into the copy constructor. It'll come over here, and this part right here is where it's gonna give me an issue. Uh, because of the fact that I'm using a null reference, that null reference doesn't have a name associated with it. It doesn't have any data or anything. So it's not gonna see a name to kind of pull out or get from it. So if I run this, it's gonna give me this error right here telling about a null pointer exception, and it's specifically going to mention, uh, it should mention line 14, yeah, right here. So it's mentioning line 14 which is the line that I'm currently on inside of my president object. That's the line where it gave me that problem. So because of that, I need to make sure that whenever I'm trying to make a copy of this, so this is a good place where I can go ahead and do this, uh, what I can go ahead and do is just do two different, uh, have two different things that I could, uh, or two different ways that I could handle this. If the object is null, I'd go ahead and create it. Otherwise, if it's not null, then I can just do what I'm already doing right here. So let's say we do something like if, other pres does not equal null. Uh, one thing to point out is that we do in fact want to use the not equals operator because we are checking the reference. So keep in mind that we do definitely want to uh, go ahead and use this operator. So if it's not null, we can go ahead and do exactly what we've been doing. Otherwise, what we want to go ahead and do is just go ahead and create that object. So one way that you might think to try to create that object would be to just use the, uh, in this case, let's say we want to use this parameterized constructor here. So in order to do that, we would do it with the this keyword, so a little bit of what we've seen before. So you might try to do something like this. And then let's say we want to try to create that object with just some uh, placeholder, kind of a temporary name until the uh, user gives us a more meaningful name. So maybe just do something like John Doe. So you might try to do something like this, but if you try to do this, you're going to get an error for this. So this is a great opportunity to kind of mention one other constraint that comes with using the this keyword in order to uh, call another constructor. 
So you can see the error message right here when I mouse over it, uh, saying that uh, call to this must be first statement in constructor. Uh, essentially what it's trying to tell me is that if I'm going to write a statement where I'm using the this keyword to call another constructor, that has to be the very first thing that I do in whatever uh, constructor I'm currently in. So the problem that I'm running into now is that I want to include all of this code to say that I'm going to do uh, essentially a check and say if this condition is not true, we can go ahead and just get that name. Otherwise, we want to go ahead and try to make a call to this to construct the object for it. Uh, so if I want to try to do it this way, but also still retain the additional check to null, I will need to take a slightly different approach with this. So if you still recall with conditional programming, there is another way that we can capture the behavior of an if else, uh, essentially by using the conditional operator. So what I'm going to do is create that conditional operator inside of my call to another constructor using the this keyword. So I'm going to go ahead and comment all this out so we can kind of use it as a reference. And right here, I'm going to include just one line for this. And what I'm going to do is say this. And then inside of here, I'm going to go ahead and include all of the code for my conditional operator. So I'm going to have my condition that I'm checking, which was if other price is not equal to null. And then I have the two different uh, cases that I'll consider. So on the one side, I would go ahead and just create my object by using otherprez.name. If otherprez is going to be null, then we want to just go ahead and use this instead. So if we go ahead and put it in right here, we've got our condition. So we'll say otherprez not equal to null. We then have the question mark. So that's the first little character we see in our conditional operator. Uh, if this is true, so we have our first case, which is other name. So this is going to be the string that we go ahead and put into our constructor. We pass it up to this constructor right here, because keep in mind that the one parameter that this parameterized constructor is looking for is a string. So that's what we're going to give it right there. Otherwise, use that colon operator to indicate the difference between our true case, the first one, or our false case, the second one. And for this one, again, we want to use John Doe. So go ahead and put that in for the second one. And so then the final product that we have right here is basically saying uh, that we're going to make a call using this to this whole constructor right here. Uh, but what we actually pass into it, so what we're going to use for the string name, is going to be dependent on this condition that we have right here. So now if we go ahead and run this, because of the fact that in company demo, we're still using this null object right here. It will, by default, go ahead and make the president's name John Doe. So if you were to run this, you'll see the name of the company is Microsoft, and then the name of the president is John Doe. And so then later, if you want to go ahead and fix that, you would just go ahead and make sure that you actually give it a president object. So you just have to essentially modify this constructor at a later point in time with something more meaningful. All right, so at this point, this is going to conclude everything for aggregation. So we took a look at how to put together uh, two different classes where one of these classes is using the other, or at least an object of the other class as one of its fields. Uh, we also took a look at some of the different security issues. So we considered uh, two different instances where we needed to make sure that we had deep copies instead of shallow copies. And we also took a look at how to address the possibility of a null reference somewhere in our program. Uh, in the next video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at uh, generics. So you've seen a little bit about generics when it comes to things like the array list class. Uh, so what we're going to go ahead and do is actually look at how classes like ArrayList are constructed and how we can actually use them in our programs, at least on a sort of fundamental level. So we'll take a look at that in the next video.